everyone, welcome back. It's time for my bi-monthly empties. Uh, and I've got, these bags are getting not nearly as full as they used to be back in the day because I'm just not finishing that many products. And I'm touching the bottom of the bag and there's something wet at the bottom. Great. Okay, let's kick this off with the item that I just finished this morning and this is probably the reason why stuff is wet in here. Um, this is the Thayer's Witch Hazel Aloe Vera Formula Rose Petal Alcohol-Free Toner. I do really like the Thayer's toners, but I have to say I don't really get the hype behind them. I use them, they work perfectly, they seem to like, you know, make my skin really nice, but I don't know why people are obsessed with these. They're good, but they're not life-changing. Anyway, I did really like the rose petal one, um, which is surprising to me because I don't love rose-scented things, but this one seemed like fairly tame, like it didn't smell particularly offensive. I mean, there is a rose scent to it, but it is not as cloying as some rose scents can be. I am currently using the cucumber one, and I gotta tell you, that thing makes me want to gag. I can't stand the scent of fake cucumber, and that one is doing a number on me. So uh, the rose petal one was great, um, and I'm trying to use up the cucumber one. I literally just started. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna make it the whole way through, though. <laughs> Like, it, 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 it's pungent. <laughs> anyway, the rose petal one was really nice. Next up in here is one of my favorite face masks. This is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hydrating Hydrogel Mask. And I really like any kind of like hydrogel formula ones because I feel like they really conform well to my face. Um, it's either hydrogel or the biocellulose stuff. Those ones are really good at just like suctioning onto your face. This one does come in two pieces, which is kind of handy because I sometimes feel like when you put a full face mask on and it gets kind of like around the bridge of your nose, I feel like things generally don't fit very well in that area for me. But with a two-piece mask, I feel like it kind of conforms a little bit better. So um, you get like the top half of your face and then like the chin and then like upper lip area is the second part of the mask. And I love Neutrogena's Hydro Boost range to pieces. This thing can do no wrong, <laughs> seriously. It is hydrating, it smells good, it feels good on the skin, which is very rare for me to say for a face mask because I don't find that they are very comfortable overall, but this one is an absolute winner. Um, I can't remember if this one was a PR sample or if I picked it up, but I will continue to purchase these because they're fantastic. Okay, another face mask in here. This is the Life Brand Hydro Gel which is another thing I like, facial sheet mask, uh, replenishing seaweed and ceramide. And I put notes on the back of here. I think my friend Natalie suggested doing that because I was forgetting about all of these face masks that I would use up. So my note says, not a lot of essence, but still felt good. Right, this one was kind of dry, which I found a little bit surprising because generally these things are like ooey and gooey. Um, but this one didn't have much essence, but still kind of worked on the face. It did feel a bit thick though, like the actual material that was constructing this thing, even though it says hydrogel, to me that would have said that it's a little bit thinner. No, hydrogel is probably the actual formula of the essence, isn't it? This one was also a two-piecer, which was nice. Um, the mouthpiece fit the best, according to my notes, but the nose flap was really weird. Um, I really don't remember that aspect of it, but that's what my note says, so it must be real. Okay, I've got some very exciting wrappers here. <laughs> this was the best way to show you how I finished like a bath bomb. So this one was the JoJo's Bath Bombs, which is a Canadian brand that I'm super into right now. Uh, the Don't Get It Twisted Bath Bomb. So this was a tropical blend of lemon verbena, fresh juice, limes, and sweet coconut. And it was the pretzel twist one that was green. This made beautifully green bath waters and the scent was really refreshing. The thing was huge too, like it's, it's, it's a chunker. And I put the whole thing in the bath water because I wanted the whole experience of like the entire thing, you know, just like fizzing away, even though I totally could have split it in half. Um, and I did really like this one. The, the sort of lemon verbena scent is not necessarily something I love all the time and I definitely do not like it in like a body lotion, but for like a bath bomb, it's really, really good. Super refreshing, I really enjoyed that one. Got another package here. This is another one of JoJo's bath bombs. So this was the Wickedly Witchy Bath Bomb, which is a refreshing fusion of Luscious Lemon Accord and Sun Kissed Raspberries. So this thing was absolutely massive. It was like this big and it was two bubble or bath bombs together. So I twisted them apart so I could use them twice. It had, it was purple with a little witch on top, which was super cute. It was part of the like Halloween package. And this one was 
so good. I ended up getting a lot of fruity scents from her, which is not necessarily my vibe, but I really liked a lot of the looks of the fruitier ones, so I decided to give them a shot. This one was really good. I just wasn't expecting to love it in the bath um, based on the scent profile, but holy smokes, I was super in love with it. And the bath water was left like this rich um, purple color. Really enjoyed that one. Okay, the last empty wrapper I have here from JoJo's Bath Bombs is the Creepy Crawlies Bubble Bar. So this was a bright orange bubble bar uh, with a little spider on top. And when I went to go use it, I totally forgot that it was a bubble bar and I thought it was a bath bomb. So I put it in the water and nothing happened. Like after I'd already poured my bath and I was like, what the heck is going on? I'm expecting it to like fizzle out everywhere. Yeah, it didn't do anything. And then I started, it started to like crumble in my hands and I'm like, what the heck is this? Read the package, realized it said bubble bar and I completely screwed up <laughs> how I used it because I should have crumbled it under like the bath water as it flowed in. Anyway, thankfully our bathtub actually has jets, so I was able to get the bath foam <laughs> to occur that way with the jets going. Um, but I felt really stupid because I didn't use it properly and it probably would have been a more enjoyable experience if I'd done it that way. Anyway, the scent on that one was super lovely. I don't know, this one doesn't actually have the scent profile on it, but oh, the sm I don't even know what that smell is. It's a good one though. That's really helpful, isn't it? She doesn't have any more of them, so it's not like you can go out and buy them. But that was a really good bubble bar. <laughs> if only I'd known how to use it properly. That's my own fault, user error there for sure. Okay, another thing I finished up this morning. This is the Zero Face Wash. Uh, this is the relatively new to Canada that sold it, sold. This is the relatively new to Canada um, brand that is being sold at Shoppers Drug Mart. They're 100% natural, plant-based, and vegan, and the packaging is all sustainable, so everything, I believe, is recyclable, and they're out of the UK. So this face wash was fine. Perfectly nice, cleaned my face, didn't really have much of a scent to it, which I find a little bit disappointing with skincare. I mean, it's really inoffensive. Like, no one's gonna have a problem with this scent, I don't think, because there's just not much of one there. Um, and again, it worked just fine, but there was nothing truly special about this one. I'm not somebody who particularly cares about like being 100% natural, like not even close. So for me, that aspect of it really doesn't weigh into how I feel about the product. So while I used it and it was nice to use, it's not something I would necessarily repurchase because there was nothing totally different about this in comparison to anything else I've tried. Um, so yeah, it was adequate, worked really well, but not something I would pick up. I have another face cleanser here. This is the Michelle Dermaceuticals uh, Refining Sugar Cleanser. And I've gone through quite a bit of these. I think I've received them all in PR. I've had like large sizes, small sizes. They seem to always give these ones out. And this one's interesting. I do really like the sugar cleansing aspect on my face. I feel like the grit is just right. And there's a lot of it in it too. Like it's a really, um, thickly gelatinous formula with a lot of grit to it that is not uncomfortable on the face, which is a really good thing. Um, but there's something about the scent of this that I loved when I first got it because it's a really thick, like, sugar scent. Maybe a hint of vanilla in there too. But the problem was that the more that I used it over time, I just found the scent to be too much. Like, don't get me wrong, it's a good scent. And I think if somebody were to smell this right off, like the bat, they'd be like, oh, that's really good. But over time, I just got really tired of the scent. So even though it worked out really well for my skin for exfoliating and all that, <laughs> I started to like not look forward to using it just because of the scent. So anyway, I do think it's a good product though and I would use it again if it happened to end up in my collection once again. Okay, I never talk about these kinds of things, but I had to mention um, these cotton facial pads, these luxury cotton facial pads by Quo. So, um, must have been about a year ago, I tried out the Shiseido uh, cotton pads because everybody used to go on and on about those things. And they're fine, but they're not worth the more expensive price tag in comparison to cotton rounds. So I think at the time I also picked up the Quo ones that were similar to the Shiseido ones because I was like, well, why not? They're cheaper. And I gotta tell you, I, I do not get these cotton facial pad obsession things at all. These ones in particular were quite annoying because the way that they were cut, they just never really stuck together properly. So the, like the ends of, this sounds so weird, but like, it's like you had two sheets and then in the middle is a whole bunch of fluff. So the, 
the fluff would never like hold the two pieces of cotton together and they would always end up very separated. It was just like stupid. It was messy and dumb. And I was just not a fan of this. Don't get me wrong. I look like Quo's cotton rounds, but the cotton pads are just nonsensical to me. So I would never pick them up again. Um, the Shiseido ones, I don't remember like pulling apart like the Quo ones, but I just, Again, I don't get the point in these cotton pads versus the rounds. And I'm looking at the back and it says, yeah, it does say triple layered cotton. So it really is the central layer that's causing the issue because it just like, it pulls apart and then you got your ends like flopping off on either side. This sounds ridiculous for a cotton pad, but that is what happened. So I've used up the package, but I'm not going back to that. Cotton rounds the whole way. Okay, I have another face mask in here. This is the Pretty Animals by Mask Bar. And I was really excited by this one because it was a raccoon firming sheet mask. And <laughs> I'm obsessed with raccoons. I love raccoons everything. I think they're the cutest things in the world. They're big fat butts and their huge tails. I love raccoons. So when I saw this, I snapped it up and I waited quite a few months before I tried it out because I just wanted to savor the fact that I had a raccoon mask and we use it at a perfect opportunity. Um, <laughs> this does not look like a raccoon. At best, you might look like a bear, but it just really did not scream raccoon at all. Um, it didn't fit it didn't look good. It didn't really stick to my face properly. This was a total failure. Like it was so disappointing. Um, I would never recommend this. Some of the sheet masks, like the animal masks are kind of cute. This one was not cute and no good. Okay, so I have two Sage Vive top coats in here and what I think happened is that I got to like the halfway point on one of them and then put it away to like mix into another halfway point bottle so that I could have a full bottle and not be struggling to get the bottom of it. But I have to say I don't really recommend that because by the time you get to close to the bottom of a bottle, the texture of it's really goopy and really thick and while it's usable, um, I found combining it with another mostly used bottle just ended up being a disaster because then the formula was super thick. Uh, so I definitely won't be doing that in the future. But I will say that I use this stuff constantly. This is the only top coat that I use. If you've been around on my channel for a while or you've been watching any of my empties, you know I won't shut up about this stuff. Sage Vive is the best top coat out there and I won't use anything else. It holds every nail polish intact on my nails for an entire week, which is exactly what I want out of my nails. I could probably extend it to two weeks, but I get bored of my polish color and want to change it every week. So this stuff is the best. I can't say enough good things about it. Um, I've purchased, I think, three more backups at this point because I was starting to run low and I will never be without this stuff. Holy smokes, I actually have some makeup products in here. Whew. Uh, benefits precisely my brow pencil. I think I have slagged off this pencil before in the past because I just thought it was too expensive in comparison to the NYX micro brow. I think I'm taking my words back now because I think that this color match is better for me. This is a shade two. Um, I think shade two is better for me in the uh, benefit one than the NYX micro brow in taupe. It's hard for me to say that because this is like double the price point of the NYX one and I'm super cheap when it comes to products that I have to constantly repurchase. But the benefit precisely my brow pencil in the shade two does seem to work out better on my brows. Now that being said, I am wearing the NYX micro brow on my brows today and I won't know until I'm editing, editing the footage from my videos uh, to see how I feel about it because the mirror lies to me. I see things totally different on camera than I do in the mirror. So I'm curious to see what I think of my brows when I start editing my videos. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised with just how much I like this tone for my brows and all the other products that I use on them. It just seemed to really work out together. And I might be converted to this one from the NYX micro brow. I might be. Okay, I have a mini mascara in here. This is the Hourglass Caution Extreme Lash Mascara, and I hate this thing. I don't know why people love this mascara so much. Um, I, eh, I don't know why because I don't like it, but mascara is a very personal thing, right? So the thing that I don't like about this is that it makes my lashes crispy. I can't stand that feeling, okay? If my lashes feel like if I touch them lightly, they feel crunchy as opposed to like 
like waxy and slick, which is my preferred texture for eyelashes with mascara on them. If they feel crunchy and like crispy and like if I rub them a little bit, like they would just kind of flake off, I can't stand that. Like I want nothing to do with it. And not that I'm going around touching my eyelashes all the time, but sometimes I'll just go like that. And if I feel like crusty bits, I'm just not into it. So I use this in quarantine for a few months because I didn't want to open another mascara package and I was only using mascara once a week anyway to film. But I eventually got to the point where I'm like, I'm using something that I hate. And I don't care if I'm wasting my money by opening another mascara, <laughs> even though these are like sample sizes that I got for free. I can't do it anymore. So I ended up opening another package. It's the Milk um, Kush Mascara, and I like that so much better. Uh, this one, I just couldn't hack it. The brush, there's nothing wrong with the brush. Like I actually quite like it because it's one of those smaller like tapered brushes that work really well for me. I, I do not get along with any oversized brushes at all. I just, I don't know how people do it. So I love the brush, um, but everything else is trash about this. I can't stand the formula. Um, I don't even think the longevity was that good. And I'm only wearing mascara for like two hours to film. Like I feel like it just, did it flake off on me? <laughs> I don't know, I feel like I blocked it out too because I just did not like it so much. Anyway, I'm gonna end it there. I'm not a fan of this thing and I don't know why people like it. Okay, uh, another makeup-ish product in here. This is the Tarte, I always screw this name up, the Quench Lip Rescue Balm. Um, this is in the shade Opal, which is not a good color, but let me talk about the formula first. So these Quench Lip Rescue Balms are like the best thing ever. I wear them if I'm going on vacation I need to have hydrated lips, if I want an easy lip color that's like glossy and um, a little bit of color, but mostly translucent, like the kind of thing that will match with any kind of eye look. I go through these things constantly when I'm more traditionally wearing mascara. Um, so I recommend these nonstop because they're so good. However, this color is just not, not my style. <laughs> it's called Opal and it's kind of like this white purple color and when you put it on your lips it basically gives me a white cast so maybe that would work for somebody else but I just don't like the color of it on me so what I ended up using this for is at night before I go to bed I would wear it as like my nightly lip balm um, and that's fine because I'm not seeing anybody other than my husband, right? So I don't really care what my lips look like um, because I'm gonna be sleeping overnight. And this thing is super hydrating. It's lovely to wear overnight. Um, they are kind of expensive though, so they're not something that I would want to use as a nightly lip balm if it was a color that I really liked because um, you tend to go through these pretty fast because the formula is really emollient and you'll find that when you slide it on, like a lot comes off. I, I can't recommend these enough, but the shade Opal is just just not for me. Okay, and the very last thing I have in here is a native bar soap. So I actually use a lot of bar soap, but I never think to mention it on here because it's just not that interesting and shower gel tends to be more exciting. But I really like bar soap and I've been really enjoying the native ones. So this is the citrus and herbal musk bar soap and I'm gonna open it up so I can remind myself of the scent, even though clearly it's empty. Yeah, so this one was a bit thicker than the other ones that I've used. Um, but I really enjoyed it. There's something about using a bar soap as opposed to a shower gel poof that every now and then just makes me feel like a little bit more efficient in the shower. I don't really know what it is, but um, there's a lot of bar soap that I like and this was one of them. They're an online only like internet brand really from what I remember. And I know a lot of people have raved about their deodorants, but I've tried out their bar soap and I really liked it. So again, this was the citrus and herbal musk one and it was really good. So that is it for my empties. That is everything that I finished up in the last two months. I hope you found the mini reviews helpful. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will hopefully see you next time. Bye.